Welcome to our final video on Hess's Law. In this video, we are going to use the formula method to solve Hess's Law problems. In our previous lesson, we saw that we can always use heats of formation as our known equations to solve for an unknown heat of reaction. If you do a few examples using heats of formation, you will notice that the same steps are always applied when you use heats of formation in a Hess's Law problem. The first thing that's always done is that the heat of formation for each substance is always multiplied by its coefficient in the target equation. The second thing that's always done is that the heat of formation for all of the reactants in the target equation need to be reversed, as in we have to change the sign of the heat of formation. As a result of these same two steps being applied in every Hess's Law problem using heats of formation, we can simplify this into a mathematical formula. Expressing this equation in words, to find a heat of reaction, we take the enthalpies of formation of the products, multiply them each by their molar coefficient in the target equation, and sum them. And then from that, we subtract the heats of formation of the reactants, each multiplied by their molar coefficient in the target reaction. It looks like a complicated formula, but it really is quite simple. Let's take a look at an example. For this example, using the formula method, I'm going to use the same target equation as we looked at in a previous example. Here we have the combustion of propane. I've written out the enthalpies of formation for the four substances involved in this chemical reaction. Propane, carbon dioxide, water, and I've included oxygen as well to show how it doesn't play a role. Let's write out the formula now. Let's look at how we substitute our known values into this equation. I start off with my heats of formation of my products, which are carbon dioxide and water vapor. I have three moles of carbon dioxide as a product, and I multiply it by the heat of formation for carbon dioxide. My second product is water vapor, and I have four moles of water vapor, which I multiply by the heat of formation for water vapor. I've subbed my products, and now I'm going to do the same thing for my reactants. I'm going to split the equation into two lines here, just so I'm not crowded. Note that for any element in its standard state, its heat of formation is defined by being zero. So no matter how many moles of oxygen I have, it's going to be multiplied by zero. So it's not going to play a role in the sum. You are welcome to leave those values out to simplify this equation, but I'm just showing it here to show you the full equation. The biggest mistake in using the formula method is trying to do too many steps at once and mixing up some positive and negative signs. I would highly recommend breaking this up into a series of steps so that you don't reverse a sign. In this step, I've multiplied each heat of formation by the molar coefficient, and now I will sum these values to get my final answer. So the heat of reaction, which is the heat of combustion for one mole of propane, is negative 2,043 kilojoules. Note that this method can only be applied by using the heats of formation. Okay? You can't use a heat of reaction for any old chemical equation. However, when you're provided with heats of formation, the formula method is often faster than having to manipulate several chemical equations to show that they sum in the equation method for Hess's law.